Hi guys, today we are going to discuss about biliary system, surgical anatomy and physiology. Here this is the gallbladder. In biliary system, in uh, we can discuss about extrahepatic biliary tract and the gallbladder. Talking about gallbladder, the shape is pear shaped. And the normal capacity of gallbladder is about 50 milliliter. It is located in between the right and left lobe that is divided by a line between the gallbladder fossa and the inferior vena cava. Talking about the parts, we have three parts. We have fundus, body and neck in the gallbladder. In the body, we have an, an angulated portion on the posterior part of the body of the gallbladder which is known as infundibulum. If it is dilated it is known as Hartsman's pouch and it is the site one of the common site for gallstone formation due to the biliary stasis. The fundus is present on the angulation of ninth coastal cartilage and it is fully covered by peritoneum. The body is in direct contact with the first part of the duodenum and the neck is yes shaped and is connected to the cystic duct. Cystic duct is 2 to 3 cm in length and 2 to 3 mm in diameter and consists of mucosal elevations known as spider valve of Heister. Now let's move on to extrahepatic biliary system. Here we have liver. Inside the liver we have intrahepatic biliary radicals. And outside of it there is extrahepatic biliary system. We have right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct joining together to form the common hepatic duct. The cystic duct and the common hepatic duct forms the common bile duct, the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct together forms to the dilation known as ampulla of water which opens into the second part of duodenum through major duodenal papilla. The common bile duct length is 8 to 10 cm and the diameter is 6 mm. There are four parts in common bile duct, supraduodenal part, beside the duodenum, a retroduodenal portion, and below the duodenum or through the pa pancreas, we have intrapancreatic or infraduodenal portion. And the last one is intraduodenal portion. The, the supraduodenal portion runs on the free margin of lesser omentum along with the portal vein and the hepatic artery. The intraduodenal portion opens into the second part of the duodenum through the major duodenal papilla and it is surrounded by an sphincter known as sphincter of Odi which opens during the contraction of gallbladder. The arterial supply. Here we have hepatic artery along with the common hepatic duct and the right and left branch of hepatic artery. This is hepatic artery. 
this is right and left branch and the right branch gives rise to cystic artery which supplies the gallbladder and which lies on a triangle formed by cystic duct common hepatic duct and the inferior border of the liver this triangle is known as callet triangles and in this triangle there is a lymph node present and the afferent lymphatics arise from the gallbladder which goes and joins to this lymph node known as lymph node of Lund and it will give efferent lymphatics to hyalur lymph nodes and then to celiac lymph nodes. The arterial supply of extra hepatic biliary system, the upper portion is supplied by the cystic artery and the lower portion that is bile duct and stuffs are supplied by gastroduodenal artery. Here we have the gall bladder and the bile duct. So this is the hepatic artery with its branches. Sometimes what happens is the hepatic artery forms a tortuous course giving rise to a hump in the callot triangle known as caterpillar or Manham's hump. Manham's hump. Talking about the nervous supply, we have parasympathetic, sympathetic and sensory nervous supply. Parasympathetic is supplied by vagus. This is posterior vagal trunk. This is anterior vagal trunk and it gives rise to hepatic branch. Sympathetic is supplied through greater splanchnic nerve through celiac ganglion and thus to the gallbladder. Sensory is supplied through the splanchnic nerve to T7 to T10 in the spinal cord. Thus, the parasympathetic supply that is vagal stimulation increases the secretion, whereas the sympathetic supply that is splanchnic stimulation decreases the bile flow. Let's move on to surgical physiology. The bile secretion in normal adult is 250 to 1000 milliliter bile per day. This is duodenum here and when there is no food it goes to the gallbladder. It doesn't go to the duodenum. The components of bile are water, electrolytes, bile salts and the function of the bile salts are digestion of fat, uh, digestion of fat soluble vitamins A, D, E and K and last but not the least there is some immunological functions too. And we have cholesterol and phospholipids and we have bile pigments in the bile. 18 to 90 percent of the constituents is water. So in gallbladder what happens is it acts as a storage of bile and another important function is it absorbs the water and it concent concentrates the bile 10 times. It also absorbs the sodium and chloride. Mucous secretion is also one of the functions of the gallbladder which will result into production of mucosa and facilitates passage of the bile through the cystic duct. The fatty foods and other foods they result into secretion of secretin and cholecystokinin from the duodenum. And this is known as hormonal stimulation and there is another thing called nervous stimulation because of vagus discharge there is increase in bile flow that stimulate the secretion of the bile so here we have food resulting into hormonal stimulation and the nervous stimulation thus this will result into contraction of gallbladder and 
this sphincter of odi and it will also cause a relaxation of sphincter of odi thus releasing the bile into the duodenum and the bile acts on the food this process results into evacuation of 70 percent of gallbladder within 30 minutes a sphincter of gallbladder is equal to physiological function of the gallbladder there is no physiological function without a sphincter of gall without a sphincter of odi if there is no sphincter of odi is very important to remove the gallbladder for example in procedure like colidus jejunostomy or sphincteroplasty or even sphincterectomy sphincteroplasty is a removal of the sphincter or the whole sphincter sphincterectomy is just removal of portion of the sphincter it's better if you do cholecystectomy that is removal of gallbladder when the sphincter of odi is affected because it will result into reflux of bile and thus resulting into stone formation and which will result into a recurrent biliary colics and thus acute cholecystitis thank you for watching this video